Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we'll explore how to annotate images with polygons and polylines. We'll see how each tool works, when to use them, and check useful shortcuts and tool properties. Let's get started. The Polygon tool is located on the toolbar and is represented by a polygon icon. Click on Shape to start using it. To create a polygon, you need to set at least three points. A polygon cannot be created with fewer points. Let's fully annotate this object using the Polygon tool. Polygons are used to annotate objects in such a way as to exclude as much background as possible. This means that polygon points need to be placed as close as possible to the object's contour. Use the left mouse button to set new points. You can move images during polygon annotation using the middle mouse button or hold down the Alt key to move images using the left mouse button. If needed, you can delete previous points by clicking the right mouse button. Holding the Shift key will automatically set points as you move the mouse, so you don't need to click the left mouse button in this case. Let's continue the annotation by setting the points as close as possible to the outline of the object. To finish annotating the polygon, press the N key, or click the Done button located here. We can limit the number of points in a polygon. Reactivate the polygon tool and set the number of points to, for example, four. This way, all subsequent polygons will be limited to four points. Click on Shape and draw new polygon. Start annotating as usual, placing points one by one, and as soon as the fourth point is placed, the polygon will automatically finish. Now let's take a look at the polyline. Select it on the toolbar. It is located here. To draw a polyline, you need to set at least two points as a polyline, unlike a polygon, is not a closed figure. Let's annotate a road marking. Place points along the center of the line and continue annotating it to the end. To complete the annotation, press the N key. As you can see, the process of annotating polygons and polylines is somewhat similar. However, polygons are mostly used to annotate objects by their contours, meaning we need to capture the entire area of the object while excluding the background. Polylines, on the other hand, are used to mark linear objects, such as road markings, to capture their structure, curves, and direction. Like all objects in CVAT, polygons and polylines have the following properties. Lock property, occluded property, hidden property, and pinned property. Unlike, for example, bounding boxes, polygons and polylines are pinned by default. This means we can edit these objects point by point, but we cannot move the entire object as a whole. To do this, we need to disable the pinned property, after which this option will become available. Let's take a closer look at polygons and polylines. You may have noticed that they have a white point and an arrow on the line between points. The white point represents the starting point of the polygon or polyline, meaning the location where you started drawing the shape. At any time, you can reassign the starting point and set any other point on the polygon as the starting point by right-clicking on it and selecting Set Start Point. As you can see, this point is now white and is the new starting point. The arrow indicates the direction of the polygon. In this case, the arrow shows that the polygon was drawn clockwise. You can change the direction by clicking on the arrow. After clicking, the direction of the polygon changes. At the same time, polylines cannot have their starting point reassigned to any point. However, you can change the direction of a polyline by clicking on the arrow, which also changes the starting point. In some projects, knowing the starting point and direction of the polygon is crucial, especially for object interpolation. Object interpolation will be covered in another section. Returning to polygons, let's see how we can interact with them. We can edit a polygon by dragging its points. If it's difficult to click on a point, you can change its size in the settings. Press F2, go to the Workspace section, and set a larger value for control point size, with the maximum being 8. If the point is too large, set a smaller value, with the minimum being 4. Let's choose a value of 5. You can delete individual points by right-clicking on a point and selecting Delete Point. 
Alternatively, you can use a faster method. Hold down the Alt key and click on points with the left mouse button to delete them. Polygons have an edit mode which allows us to trim the polygon and add new points. Let's see how it works. Polygon editing begins by selecting a point, as new points will be added or existing points will be deleted after this point. After selecting a point, we can for example include a missed part of the object in the polygon, add more detail, or trim a section of the polygon. To enter edit mode, hold the shift key and click on the selected point. Let's include a neighboring cube in this polygon. After adding new points, we need to exit edit mode. To do this, select the nearest point and click on it. Now the editing is complete. Let's trim part of the polygon. Select the point where we will start the cut, then select a second point. For example, an opposite point. When we try to cut the polygon into roughly two equal parts, we will be asked to choose which part to keep, and the other part will be deleted. If we want to trim a small section of the polygon, the smaller part will be deleted automatically. If you want to control which part of the polygon is preserved, you can disable intelligent polygon cropping in the settings. When this feature is disabled, even the smallest cut will require you to specify which part of the polygon to keep. Polygons have a slice function, which allows us to split a polygon into two parts, creating two polygons that share a common boundary. Press Alt plus J to activate the slice function, or click on the three points and select slice. After that, the polygon borders will be black. It means that we have activated this function. Now, on this black line, we need to put the first point, from which we will start cutting the polygon. Create a new contour between these objects, and to finish, we need to put a point outside the contour so that the line intersects with the contour line. Finally, let's consider automatic bordering, a very important feature that saves time when annotating polygons or polylines by using points from an existing object. This function allows us not only to place new polygon points on existing object points, but to do this automatically. To use this feature, we need to activate it in the settings. Press F2 and enable automatic bordering. Press the N key to start annotating a new object. After activating the tool, points from all existing objects will be displayed, and we can use these points to annotate a new polygon. Start annotating an object. When we approach a point on a neighboring polygon that is closest to our new object, we click on it. Next, we need to select a direction by choosing any following point in the direction of the new object's annotation. When we select the point, it will be highlighted in purple, and the last step is to select the end point. After clicking the end point, the selected section will be automatically annotated. If we had chosen a different direction, the function would have worked differently, capturing a different section of the polygon. Let's return to the initial option, and now we can continue annotating the polygon. So we have explored how to work with polygons and polylines in CVAT, including their creation, editing, and the use of additional features such as limiting the number of points, editing points, trimming with slice, and using automatic bordering. We have seen that polygons allow us to precisely outline objects while excluding the background, while polylines are suitable for annotating linear structures, such as road markings. All these tools and features help make the annotation process accurate, flexible, and efficient. It's important to practice and consider the requirements of each specific project to fully utilize the capabilities of CBAT.